Hello everyone, this is one supplementary video based on the three previous video before. And in this video, we will specially talk about how to connect the Siemens controller PLC to SQL database. And especially for this ID and this version, the current version from this ID number, that is a version 20, version 2.0. And I used three videos before discussed how can we implement this entire connection. But that time, that version is a version 1.1, version 11. And this version 20, it contribute one important function. We can see the explanation here. It add update and select. So actually, these two functions are very important. As we know, the insert into that can insert or add a new line in the SQL database. And update, it can modify one existing line if you already insert one line. And the select is very important. Select can based on your where command and sort the data from your existing line or rows in the database. So these three functionalities are very common use the command when we send the data, sort the data from the data server. However, some subscribers and some friends claimed they did have a trouble on this version 20 test. So recently, I downloaded this version 20 and did a test. Okay, so in this video, I will not explain the detail on the SQL side because SQL will be the same from the previous test. And in this video, we will mainly talk about I will download this version 20 and use the PLC sim at once, simulate i7-1500 PLC and do this uh, test, especially on this uh, update and the select those two commands. Okay, let's download the program and download the document. Document is very important, especially on the explanation for this uh, update and the select. Okay, after we download this project, keep in mind this ID number is this. And in this project is using i7-1500. And because I don't have the hardware in hand, but I have a PLC sim at once. Keep in mind that's the PLC sim at once because this PLC SIM at once allows us to send the data out of our laptop. So if your SQL database located in another laptop using this PLC SIM at once, it still allows us to do this communication test. Okay, so firstly, I will set up this PLC SIM at once, set up one instant. So we can expand here and type in the instant name and type in the IP address. And because I used this name test before, so I can directly select that. So if this is first time for you to test, so you can type in the IP address. And in this test, I will use IP address 192.168.1.202. That is my simulation PLC IP address. And then hit the start. So we will start one simulation instant PLC. So it started. And then let's shift back to the TI portal side. And firstly, let's go to the device configuration. So let's change the IP address. So I will change the IP address to match my IP address testing. So my IP address is 192.168.1.202. This is my PLC IP address. And after this, let's go to the SQL command. So in this video, I will not explain so detail because I used one video before. I will paste the link under this video. To find out detailed explanation, you can find out the manual from this ID. That example web page, you can download the manual for the detailed explanation. Or from the video I did before, I paste the link under this video. And to set up the Ethernet connection, so we need to go to the SQL config and expand this. So the interface ID, that is a 64. So we can find out the number from the hardware configuration, talking about the Ethernet port. So this 64, that is a hex. So actually it's an integer number is 100. And this ID is a TCP IP connection number. So we can leave this uh, as a default. Okay, here we can use as a default. Here, keep in mind the remote port this is a 1433. 
that is a SQL side port number. And the important address is this. So this address is our SQL laptop or SQL computer IP address. And in this case, I installed SQL in another virtual machine. And the virtual machine IP address is 192.168.1.1. Keep in mind, you can disable the firewall from your SQL laptop or computer because sometimes the firewall will disable this port. Okay, and then let's expand this login information. Here, the username, password, those login information should be the same as the SQL side setting. To check out the detailed setting from the SQL side, please check my previous video COM13ABC, this is the D. So please look at the link under this video. And if we quickly preview the SQL setting in my site, so I'm using the SQL Express. This is the instant name of this SQL Express. And my database and my login, I'm using the admin. And my table, one I named the PLC data and second, PLC data underscore two. Okay, so based on those information, we need to shift back to the PLC side and set the login and this instant name. Okay, so my SQL user and the password I use admin and the server name that is the instant of this server name SQL Express and the database name S7PLC SQL DB. Keep in mind this. Okay. So the instant name is this, and admin, this is login and the password. And the password I use the same. And this is the database, i7plc sqldb. And those name will be used when we send the data. And okay, now we finished the configuration. Okay, let's compile and download this CPU. Keep in mind, because I'm using the PLC sim at once, so I need to select this uh, Siemens PLC SIM virtual Ethernet adapter. It allows us to communicate with one laptop outside. Okay, click this start search. And in the meantime, keep in mind we need to select this PLC virtual Ethernet adapter. Okay, that match this selection here. And make sure you start up this PLC so the TI portal can search this simulation PLC here. Okay. Okay, a fine, and let's hit this download. Okay, the first time we need to stop all. Okay, now it's stopped, so let's hit this uh, finish and start the module. Then this uh, simulation PLC will be started. Now this uh, simulation PLC is started. Okay, then to test this communication, we can expand here and use this uh, watch table. Here's this online monitoring. Okay, so we can see this area is used to set up the communication and here is used to diagnose the system fault. And here, this is the difference between the version 11 and the version 20. The version 20, I like this style. Using this number, we can switch the different command. Those commands, basically we have three groups. The first group, we send the integer data. And the second group, we can send the chart. For example, in this case, I can send the apple, red, and the volume. The third group, we can send the date time and the integer number. So it has a three groups here. So control this index number, we can send the different command to the SQL. So here we'll create another issue. Someone claim that if they are change the CPU, or copy all those programs to another project, they found the command from this OB1. They claimed they have a trouble on this SQL command. This is a command number here. This command number shows red. That because when you copy the program, they, they forgot to copy the PLC tags here. Because from this PLC tag, if we double click, if you forgot copy the command number, that is the integer number based on the MW0, this address. So the system will show the right. Don't forget, copy the program blocks and the PLC tags 
as well as the date type, the PLC date type. Expand here. And PLC date type is very important here. Don't forget, copy all of them. Okay, now let's test this uh, command zero. This is very simple and we showed before. And this example, we will send the three integer data to this uh, PLC data underscore one. But in my case, I especially want to test these things that I'm using the PLC data rather than the underscore one. So I need to change this command. And if we quickly review from my SQL side, and my SQL side, I set up this a PLC data rather than the underscore one. So if I hit this a design, as we can see, I set up the ID, the column name. The first one is ID. From that example, the first column is named integer value one. So I especially want to show some difference. And this first column is ID, and second is a integer value two. Third, integer value three. Keep in mind the date type we set up the integer from this PLC data, this table. And to check out the value here, now we can click this uh, edit top 200 rows. There are some existing data in this uh, database. I used them for the testing. So now we will send the new data. Okay, we will see it will add one line. Keep in mind, we need to send the PLC data here. Okay, so we need to change this command. I will use this command, command zero, this index. So let's copy and paste here. And I need to change. I need to delete this underscore. And let's write a new value, for example, um, 745, okay? So let's send, okay, 745. And currently we haven't set up this connection yet. So if I turn on this enable, firstly let's turn it on. So we will see now it shows valid and it shows busy. That means, especially for this valid, once it's turned on, that means this TCP connection already set up. If you found the error, check out the status and check out the sub functions status to diagnose the problem. So basically the key problem is you set up the connection between the PLC and the SQL got to fail, mainly because of the username and the login we just show that configuration. So keep in mind, those configuration must match with the SQL side. And keep in mind the IP address, this IP address is a SQL side IP address. And then let's transfer this command. And keep in mind, because this line locates the index zero, so I need to prepare the zero here. So I need to prepare the zero at here. So let's transfer, okay, prepare this data. Now it's transferred to here, okay? Once I trigger this SQL execute command, so it will send the data 745 to the database. Okay, trigger. And then let's check out the data in the database. Okay, if you go back to the SQL, at here it didn't get a refresh. So let's close it and reopen it. Okay, as we can see, now we send the data correctly, 745. Let's send it again. Okay, this time let's change 8, 5, Six. Okay. Send, transfer, and trigger this send command. Execute. And let's shift back to the SQL side. Okay. Close, and reopen it. So as we can see now, it added here. So this is a similar function we showed from the version eleven that insert into that command. So we can create a new line. Personally, I recommend we can use the first column, we name it ID. Every time we send the command, so we can add this ID. And then when we use the, the update or the select, so we can use this ID number 
to do the index sorting. Okay, this is the table and named PLC data. And then let's test this PLC data underscore two. And from this table, so if we right click, look at the design. And in this PLC data underscore two, I created three columns. And first one is a fruit, second color, third amount. Keep in mind, the first two, they are chart and the amount, they are integer, okay? And now, and this is the data, and these two existing line, I, I tested the communication before. Okay, the first one is an apple, color red, cherry red, and amount is six, okay? Okay, let's park in here and shift back to the, and if we quickly review this menu from this transmission SQL instruction, so we just did this test, insert into PLC data. I'm using the PLC data rather than this underscore one. So we send the three integer data, five, six, seven, or the integer number you need to send. And the second test, I'm testing this. So insert into PLC data underscore two, values, apple, red, five, using this way, send the data. There's one troubleshooting here. So I found actually we should send this dollar. This is a format we need to send. So let me show how can we test this. Okay, so this time to do this second test, we need to send that PLC underscore two. So we will send insert into PLC data underscore two value and apple color and the integer data, right? For example, this time our table name is a PLC data underscore two values, apple and red and six, this number. But if we hit the enter, so the system doesn't allow us to type in like this because we need a format. That because the apple on the right, that is a, the chart. So to type in this, we need to follow this format. Dollar, apple, dollar and, dollar and dollar and. So here I can change another name, for example, green and the number we can type in uh, nine, okay? So we need to use this format dollar here. And once we hit the enter, we will see the system will now show the red, okay? And then let's send. Okay, this time is correct. So this is a command we can insert into this line, into this PLC data underscore two, that table and we still use the command zero, okay? And let's transfer. And connection is still okay. And let's trigger, trigger. Okay, let's go to the SQL side and verify if we send this apple green nine correctly. Okay, now let's close it and reopen this database, add it 200 rows. And as we can see, the apple green nine we send correctly. And next, I'm going to do this test. I'm going to update the data. For example, the existing apple, it, that is a red, but the amount is five. I'm going to change to three, for example. So let me show how can we implement the update function. So from the command one, it shows update. So we can change this update command, okay? So we can copy this existing one, paste here, update PLC data underscore two, set, okay? And set the column. So our column is a fruit, a name. And we will use the update, find out the table underscore two. We will use this where, find the cherry first, and side the line, fruit, the name, the cherry, color, red, and the amount, change to three. In the existing database, the cherry, that is a red, but its amount is a six. So we will use this update to change this amount number. Okay, so let's transfer this command first. And then 
we need to use this uh, command line. So this index number, we need to change to one. Send. And now let's trigger this command. Okay, so let's verify if the cherry, the line, that amount changed to three. So close it and uh, let's reopen it. Okay, here it didn't uh, change successfully. Let's verify. Or oh, maybe this amount, uh, there's one type of problem, A-M-O-U-N-T. Okay, so let's go back. And okay, here, there's one type of problem, A-M-O-U-N-T. Okay, amount equal to three. Color, that's the C capital, C-O-L-O-R, okay and transfer and the last trigger again okay let's verify if this number changed to three okay close it and reopen it so as we can see a update correctly cherry red change to three and now let's demonstrate the select so firstly we will select, we will sort that cherry fruit and find the amount number. Okay, let's do this job. And then we will use this line, select the fruit. So we will sort the fruit name first. Then we will use this uh, SQL command number three, this index three command. So the basic idea is this where that is a condition. So we will sort the fruit name first and the value feedback, the returns, we will return this amount. Okay, so in our case, we will sort the cherry and uh, return the amount number, integer number. So we will copy this command and paste it here. Let's select the amount from the database the table from the table name underscore two. This condition, we will use the fruit equal to our cherry, that name, let's change to cherry. Okay, so, and this command index, that is three. So we prepare three here and let's send it first. Okay, prepare this. And once we trigger it, this amount number will be returned. So where the value will be returned, that will be returned to this uh, token rows here. And according to this menu, so let's scroll down from this chapter two. So you have to read the detail, very detailedly about this uh, selection instructions. There are two pages here. I will explain this area after. By this existing example, to sort the amount by using the fruit name, so that amount number will be returned right here. So this is the number it will be returned. So to do this test, go back to the PLC side and watch carefully at here. And now we are sorting the cherry amount. So I will send the trigger and watch carefully about here and send trigger, boom, it returns three. Three, that is amount number. And because we only have a one cherry line, so it returns the three. That cherry, the amount three will be returned. And next, let's test this. So totally we have a three lines, but we have a two lines, they all apple. They are all apple, and they have a different amount. If we store the full name using the apple and we return the amount, basically we will return two values. One is a five, one is nine. So let me demonstrate how we can do this. Okay, so this time we still select the amount, but this time where fruit we will equal to apple. Okay, we will sort the apple, so transfer. And let's trigger, and watch carefully at here. So let's trigger. Boom, the number five and the number nine will be returned. 
So if you have multiple lines, they will be returned from zero. Totally, this example prepares 16 rows at here. If we go to, if we open this data type, double click. So that token rows, it prepared 15 lines. Okay, 15 lines here. Okay. If in your database, you have a multiple lines, you probably need to increase this number so that the system can return multiple lines. If the same information, we have a multiple rows, we need to return. In this case, we have returned two rows, five and nine, they are among number. So as we can see, the five and the nine, we returned correctly, okay? And the two here, this is the exact same showing in the manual and showing from this version 20. And next, we can do this test. So we still use the PLC data, that's three integer table. And when I did the test, I tried to sort the integer number from my another data table. But the first time when I did this test, I failed. And then I reveal this manual. I review this menu and check out, and especially from the page 16 and the explanation here. And then the key information is showing here. This token column metadata, and especially this lens 24. So in next video, I will show how can we troubleshoot, how can we solve this. And in next video, I will show how can we use the Wireshark and check out this Mac data, this lens, and use this lens we need to set in our program and figure out how can we use this select flexibly and correctly. Okay, see you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.